As Jesus was walking through Jerusalem, he saw a man who had been born blind. He had been blind his whole life. He had never seen anything or anyone. Jesus' disciples asked him, Jesus, is this man blind because he did something wrong? Or because maybe his parents or his family did something wrong? Is that why he deserves to be blind? Jesus replied, no, he's not blind because of that. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Then he spat on the ground and made some mud with his spit. When he had made the mud, he picked it up with his hands and rubbed the mud on the man's eyes. Go, Jesus told him. Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. The man felt his way through the narrow streets until he reached the pool. The man was helped to the water and then he picked up the water with his hands, rubbed it on his eyes and washed away the mud. And to his amazement, for the first time in his life, he could see his blindness has been healed. The man's neighbours and friends saw him. Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? People doubted. They didn't believe what they were seeing. They said, no, he only looks like him. It's me, the man said. And he explained all that had happened. Where is this person who healed you? His friends asked. The man wasn't sure. The man's friends and neighbours took him to the Pharisees, the religious group. And they asked him what had happened. I put mud on my eyes, the man said, and when I washed it off, I could see for the first time ever. The Pharisees realised that this had all taken place on what they called the Sabbath day, which was a day of rest. They thought that because this had taken place on the Sabbath day, when people were supposed to rest, that this miracle, this event, couldn't have been done by God. But they were wrong. The Pharisees sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? He is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. He's been blind all his life. But we've got no idea how he can see now. Why don't you ask him? The Pharisees turned to the man again. Tell us the truth, they ordered. How did this happen? We know that God can't have done this. How did this person open your eyes? The man said, I've already told you. And the man and a group of people with him said to the Pharisees, not just anybody could have done something like this. No sinner could have healed him. Surely, the man who healed him must be God. Only he could have done this. The Pharisees were furious. They didn't want to believe that Jesus was God. So they screamed and shouted at the man, and they had him thrown out. When Jesus heard that the man had been thrown out, he went looking for him and found him. The Pharisees hadn't believed that Jesus was God. But the man who Jesus had healed did. Lord, I believe, the man said, and he worshipped Jesus. So what was clear was that not everybody agreed about Jesus here. When the Pharisees began investigating the moment when Jesus healed this man, the people were divided into two groups. Not all of them were of the same opinion about what had happened and about what Jesus had done. The two groups of people could be described like this. The one group of people understood who Jesus was and understood what that meant. So one of the people in this group says, a sinner couldn't have done this. 
a sinner couldn't have performed what we've just seen. Now, every human being who has ever lived, including you and including me, is a sinner. We have all done things wrong. We have all made mistakes. We have all had wrong in our lives. Apart from one person, the only human being who has ever lived, who is not a sinner, who is perfect, who has never thought or said or done anything wrong, is Jesus. So when the person in this first group says, a sinner couldn't have done this, a sinner couldn't have done what Jesus has just done, what they were really saying was, they understood that Jesus was who he said he was. The promised rescuer, the perfect representation of God, they knew who Jesus was. They understood that this person was God as a human being. So that's the first group. A group of people who, when they said, well, a sinner couldn't have done this, a sinner couldn't have performed this act right before us, that group of people realises who Jesus is and what that means. The second group of people don't. The second group of people haven't grasped who Jesus is and haven't grasped what that means for them. So the big question is which of those two groups are you and I in? Because we are in one of those two groups. There isn't a third group. We are either a person who understands that we are sinners, just like that first group did, and understand that Jesus isn't a sinner, understand that Jesus is perfect and that Jesus is the perfect representation of God. Either we realise that or we don't. It's incredibly important that we realise that we are a sinner, that we have got things wrong in our lives and that Jesus is not, that Jesus is perfect. Jesus is everything that he says he is. All of the claims Jesus makes about himself in the Bible and all of the claims that are made hundreds of years before he's born, he absolutely proves every single one of them. And this first group of people realise it. And just by seeing what he's done for this man, realise that only Jesus could have done this. Only the perfect man who is God could have done what Jesus did here. The question is, do you realise who Jesus is? Do you realise what that means for you? 